Okay, video number two for the week. Um, bef before we go much further into, into here, I want to show you the program options. And there's two ways to get here. You can just type options on the keyboard. So we'll go OP. Uh, I got to click into here. So OPT. And you see it starts pop up with my commands that start with OP. So options. I can click it or press enter. And these are the program options where you can change things. And if we, that's where all the files are stored at. Display covers how the program works. Um, you got a choice here between light and dark program options, you know. Um, I, I usually, you know, these are pretty much defaults out of the package, the way things come. You know, we can change them. You know, you can change them some ways. Um, Tooltips are helpful because that's the little pop-up that <clears throat> comes up when you hover the mouse over something. Um, resolution. These, these things are all pretty standard, okay? Open and save. Um we have an option as to how far back we want to save our our drawings so pretty much leave that set on 2018. now auto save <clears throat> what this means is that it whatever the time you put here is it will save your file every 10 minutes okay but what it does is it saves it as a temporary file okay and you can turn off or on here, create a backup copy with each save. Okay. Um, I definitely recommend you have that turned on in case your, you know, computer crashes for whatever reason. Uh, plotting, these are settings to deal with plotting. We'll talk about those later. The system settings. Uh, most of these will be fine as far as uh, the defaults are. User preferences. Um, I, I don't do much customization here. Uh, we, we won't be doing dimensioning for a while, but you definitely want to have these have this turned on. The drafting. Here's where you know we turn off some of the settings for different things. Just looking at some of them here. Uh, the grips, the boxes. Hmm. Main thing I wanted to show you right now was was the auto save so that you can have that turned on. Okay. Oh. Um, I don't want to save any changes to what I had there. I want to make sure your auto save is turned on. Now, when we go to save a file, you can do here or you can type Q save. Uh, on the keyboard, and uh, it it made since we opened up the ACAD template, it may default back to this directory. But you're going to want to create folders for this particular class, and you may even want to create subfolders for each week of the class. And then save your drawings in that so that you've got a way to keep things organized um, for that particular class. Okay, so in this case, you uh, you may want to do a, a folder for the semester. You know, whether it's fall semester or spring semester, whatever. So we'll, we'll say fall of 2024. And then a folder under that for each of the classes that you're taking. So you'd have one for 1101. I, I don't know, you might be taking 2010, uh, which will have CAD drawings also. Um, and then you'd have like, you know, week one, week two, week three, like that. Okay. And so you pick your folder and then you give it a name. And I, I like everything in, in my program. I like you to use uh, your last name. And then whatever the assignment name or number is, 
and I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say twenty three point forty five drawing twenty three point forty five okay and then you want to make sure that this file type right here is set at DWG so that when you save it it saves it as a DWG file okay and I'm, I'm I'll just go ahead and save that all right now you notice at the top up here once you've saved it <clears throat> it puts the file name up there at the top and right over here okay all right so let's um um the mouse the mouse is pretty easy uh you know left button is the select if you have a wheel on your mouse it zooms in and out as you roll the wheel if you push down on the mouse wheel it's pan okay and then if you right click in in the drawing area okay if you right click you have some options here uh, the first one would repeat the last command that you used. Okay. Uh, clipboard is, is just like any other program. You can copy uh, and paste things to the clipboard. <clears throat> you have an undo command right here. And then you can switch into pan or zoom mode right there. Okay. So those are the main, the main things there. Now, if I were to select an object and right click, my menus are changed now. I still got the repeat, uh, but now I can erase, move, copy it, scale it, rotate it, different things like that. Okay. Now, selecting items. And if you haven't drawn some things, draw you a few lines on, on your screen there. When I, I can select items one at a time by clicking on the item and see it selects all of them and over my properties it tells me I've got three lines selected okay and it won't tell me any details about the things that are all different but the things that are identical it will list out now if I click if I click my mouse and then drag to the right it will select only the items that are totally within that window bounding box, okay? But if I click my mouse and drag to the left, it selects everything that the, the bounding box crosses. Okay, so that's a, that's a couple of different ways of doing things. If, if I wanted to select these two lines, I could go like that. If I wanted just this one line, I can go like that. Now, if you click and hold down your mouse, you can kind of scroll and select things within that sketched area that you have drawn out there. Those are ways of selecting things. Okay, so let's start doing a little bit of um, a little bit of drawing. And before we start drawing, I, I want to tell you how do you get rid of something. Well, um, you can select it and go delete. Okay, if you make an error and you need to go back, you can press Control Z on the keyboard to undo. Or you can hit the little undo button up here, or you can type U on the keyboard to undo. Okay, several different ways to undo something. Um, other ways to delete things, you can use the erase command, which is a E on the keyboard. Okay, or you can select it and right click and go erase. All right, so several different ways of doing things. All right, so let's let's do some drawing. So on the home tab here, we've got our draw palette right here. We got lines, a polyline, various circles, various arcs, polygons, ellipses, and things like that. Now a line is is just that. It's it's a line between two points, and it's a single entity. 
all of these things right down here that I drew are single entity lines. And the keyboard shortcut is L, enter, and then you, but the command stays active as I'm going around. If I don't hit escape, it stays active. And then when I get to the end of whatever I want, I can close it by just pressing C on the keyboard. You look down here in the command line. Down here, it says, you know, this point, I've got two options. I can either close or undo. Undo will take it back one step, but close will draw it back to the very beginning of the command. Okay. Uh, a polyline, which is this command here, or it's PL on the keyboard. Oops hit it twice okay a polyline works in much the same way as the line command except for it's all joined together in one entity okay and it, we'll, we'll deal with polylines later on in the program but when you're when you're talking a large 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 drawing polylines take up less memory than lines do because there's it's one entity okay so polylines are and there are other options for things that you can do with polylines okay um the circle command if we look at um let's look at all of our options on circles here we've got a center radius a center diameter a two point a three point and then the tangent circles so and the keyboard cut cut is c for circle and i click the center and it's going to draw me out for a radius and i can type in how big i want my radius to be so i'm going to say five okay so that's a circle radius if i want the circle diameter um and you notice the way that the snap and the dimension is going there. And so I can draw it based on what size diameter I want. Now, if I were to start it with the keyboard command, and it default goes to circle radius, but I want circle diameter, you see that in my command line, it gives me the option to press D for diameter to change that. Okay. So that's how those three work. A two-point circle is just that. It, you know you, you want a circle between two points. So I'm going to go from here to here. And that's basically the diameter of the circle. Okay. Now, the three-point circle would be a circle that passes through three points. And so I would click three known points and it would draw a circle that passes through all three of those and I don't need to know you know I don't I don't need to know any radiuses or diameters or anything like that all right uh, so let me uh, let me delete those two circles out of here and we'll look at the next ones here the tangent tangent radius um, is is useful for drawing a circle that is tangent to two lines but has a certain radius and this is how we would draw what we call a fillet or a round and so the first thing I do is I pick an object that's going to be tangent okay so it, it could be a line a polyline it could be another circle or another arc or any anything like that so I'm gonna and you notice my object snap is now the circle with a bar on it so I just click on that line anywhere and then it asks for the second tangent and so I come to this line and now it asks me for the radius and I'm gonna say two and you can see it it drew a circle that is tangent to both of those lines with a radius of two. If I 
select it and come over here to my properties, you can see a radius of two. Okay. And so the other circle is the tangent, tangent, tangent. This is when we want to draw a circle that is tangent to three different objects. Okay. And then it, it picks the size of the circle for you. Okay. So that's got uh, a lot about lines and circles. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, hmm, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and look at rectangles. So over here on this, the, the command would be rectangle. The other option is a polygon, but we're going to stick with a rectangle for right now. And notice in the options are down in the command line. Uh, I've got different options here. Um, a, a chamfer, I could, it could, I could set it up to automatically put in a chamfer and a fillet. Okay, uh, those other things are not used very often, but they, they are there. But let's just draw a rectangle first. And you can just click the second points and, and you're, you're going to find as you're working through this that <clears throat> it is easier to type in the dimension you want as opposed to trying to drag your mouse to get the right dimension. So if I want this to be like eight and four, you know, it's hard to get it down exact. So whichever one is highlighted, that's going to be the first one. So I'm going to say eight and then press tab and then hit four. Okay. And so that made me a, a rectangle that's eight by four. Okay. So let's, let's do that again. Yeah, okay, so five. And you notice once I start typing in numbers, I get a couple of different options down here. And I can go rotation. Oh. My keyboard is like messing up on me there. Let's look at it with the chamfer. Oh. Okay, so a chamfer is where it typically it's a 45 degree clip off of a corner. Um, I'm gonna say 0.5 for first chamfer setting, second chamfer 0.5. Now, first corner of my rectangle, and there you can see it, it clipped it off by 45 degrees. Okay, because I said equal sizes. If I do the same thing with a fillet, and I want a, let's say a 0.5 radius, so I just leave it that. You can see it puts a rounded corner in there. Okay. Um, and I hit R for rotate, and now I can put in my rotate angle. Um, I'm just going to say 45. And now I can put in my size that I want. Okay. So there we go about rectangles with chamfers, fillets, and rotations. And so we'll pause the video now and then start over.